course, where Frank Lampard takes charge of Chelsea for the first time. Incidentally, Arsenal have issued this statement tonight about um, Ozil and Kolasinic, who were involved in that unsavoury incident during the course of the close season when they were punted down by um, what, thieves. Um, as you can see, neither going to be involved this weekend. Uh, the welfare of our players and their families is always a top priority, say Arsenal. Uh, we've taken this decision following a discussion with the players and their representatives, and neither right yet to resume. That is really kind of concerning, scary, isn't it? I, I think that's kind of scary, because it says there are further incidents, mm. which means maybe something's happened after that as well, which, which is rather I don't want to dwell on it, but... but, but, but rich, high-profile footballers are plainly going to become a target, and that's really not good news. Incidentally, David Luiz for eight million. Is that good business? Well, it's certainly good business for, for Arsenal because they are acquiring a player with a lot of personalities, a lot of personality, uh, a lot of influence, and uh, seeing the type of team that uh, uh, Arsenal is, I think, uh, you know, it will be very beneficial for them. What sort of character is Luis in and around the club? Oh, it's, he has, uh, he has uh, you know, big influence with the other players. Is he a leader? Uh, he is a leader. Because they always he, say Arsenal don't have enough leaders. He definitely is a leader. He, he always, uh, you know, gets the attention of the others. He's, he's a very intelligent player uh, in person. And uh, so he, the, the, the others, they listen to him. Um, last year, for example, it was very important uh, for, for uh, players like uh, Rudiger. They were always looking up for him, uh, especially for a team that is trying to play football mm -hmm. from the back, like uh, we were, like Arsenal is. It's, uh, it's, it's very important to have somebody that takes responsibility when he plays. The, the allegation important. is that he's not a particularly good defender. Does that stand in your view? Uh, Probably defending is not his best ability. He's more like a midfielder than, than a defender. Okay? And in modern football, you need those type of players. But uh, when he's focused, and he can be very focused, he's, he's, he's no bad defender as well. I wouldn't say, uh, with all the due respect, he's, be he's his best quality, but he can defend well they as well. They talk these days like about defenders us. needing to break lines. Manchester United have just spent 80, 85 million on Harry Maguire because that is one of his assets. But Luis does that too, doesn't he? No, definitely. It's, I don't think there is anybody as good as him in breaking the lines mm. from the back. He gets the ball, he's always got this, uh, this passing in between the lines or changing the, you know, switching the play that it can make a big difference. For us last year, it was very, very important. So at eight million, is that one of the best summer buys? Considering the need that the, the Arsenal has is, is, a brilliant, is a brilliant move because he's exactly the type of player they needed and uh, he's not young anymore but he still has got a 32 lot to do. for a defender is not old. Nothing, really, nothing at all, Richard. Not the way I'm, I'm, just looking at, I'm just looking at stats are very important as we know in the modern game. I was just looking at his stats. He's played 36 out of 38 league games. Shows you he plays all the time. He's, he's fit. And, and they conceded 39 league goals. Right? What did Tottenham concede? 39 league goals. We don't mention anything about Tottenham not being able to defend. You know, that's not bad. Arsenal conceded 51, so he should make them better. I'm, I'm a little surprised that, that Frank's allowed someone with his experience. And as Jan says, I think with Rudiger, who's not a dominant force, and, and Christensen, who's still a young player, I think, might be a great player. But right now, I think Luis was the kind of person I think would guide him, Christiansen. My, my, absolutely. My first reaction was that, uh, that uh, something must have happened in the change room because I couldn't, I couldn't see him, uh, mm. him leaving the club. Uh, as he's always, he's always been very, you know, they always gave him a big value for what he did on, in the change room. And uh, Kail leaving was another one yeah, that uh, had a big, big voice on the changing room. I didn't expect him leaving. When so, Paris paid, what was it, 50 million all mm -hmm. those years ago? I raised a few eyebrows, but they, they were, Andy, when you and I visited that club, they, they were absolutely convinced about his ability to lead. They said they'd bought a man for the dressing room. That's what you're saying Arsenal have got. And if, if things aren't going particularly well, is he vocal enough to sort them out? 
No, we, we will say he will say words. That's for sure. Um, he's not the type of, you know, leader like John Terry was, mm -hmm. for yeah. example. But he will he will come up uh, with the, you know, intelligent things to say, positive things to say. Um, so. I am, you know, a big fan. After last year, I'm a big fan of him. Were you before you worked with him? Say it again. Were you a big fan before you worked with him? I thought uh, I thought he had some issues in his game, in my opinion, because I saw him uh, the way he, he used to defend. Sometimes I thought he was very naive, but last year I think. Uh, he has done much better than expected, and I think that uh, Sarri helped him to improve a lot defensively. Mm. I did wonder whether he and Emery had spent time in Paris together. They did, two months. That's enough. One was shipped out as Emery well, that's came enough. in, but obviously he learned enough about so him. From, what are you advise of the season? So I far? think he's the best value summer by, mm. by some distance. I think okay. Fabian Delph at 10 million yeah. is, is Would Everton's... Would you put along the lines with Andrew Robertson in Liverpool bought for five? I, don't, I, I did say at the time, I said Robertson was a terrific buy. I think Delph is Everton's Milner, 29 yeah. with all that experience for 10 million. Yeah. And another one, which I think is a really good buy, Shea Adams who scored goals for fun for Birmingham last year and didn't realise you'd worked with him at Birmingham. Yeah, I had with him and uh, as soon as we saw, uh, I remember me and Kaziragi, we were watching the, the, the game and we saw him and said, this guy's got something. Because yeah. he had the, the composure uh, when he had the ball in front of the goalkeeper that uh, nobody had around. Uh, so. Probably he was very young. I think it was the first year he was doing, or the second year as a professional, before before he was playing amateur league or, or very low league. So he, he had to learn it, but potentials were very high. He was only playing low league because Coventry released him. Um, was Not a good decision for your team. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, unfortunately sometimes later that came back to bite them. Uh, what do we make of Liverpool tonight? Comfortable win. Uh, they started very well, very strong. Um, I think uh, they show all the quality that they have. They, they, Liverpool is a team that all, every game concedes, concedes something to the opposition. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like today, if they get away and not concede, when they have the chance themselves, they, 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 the conversion rate is Is, is it a night when the coach has seen what he expected at the top end of the pitch? but will be furious about what happened at the other end of the pitch. I, 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 th I said at half-time, I think the clock would be saying to this place, listen, we've, cre we've allowed, not allowed, they've, they've created far too many openings in the first half for me at Anfield. I think he would say that. Uh, and although Liverpool were clinical in the first half when they got a chance, they took it. Yeah, I think they had four or five shots in goal and were 4-0 up. That's how clinical they were. But I said at half-time, they created opportunities Norwich in the first half that had they taken one or two it wouldn't have been an unjust score for me if they'd gone in 4-2 down Richard it really wouldn't that might sound stupid but I did I do think that once Liverpool scored the opening goal they were playing within themselves I think they, have, they had other gears to go to if they needed and also you have to remember right now Liverpool have had the community shield last week they've got the Super League coming up in midweek you know they've got these games to fit in as well so if they took the foot off the gas second half, I can understand No, that. I'm not suggesting think, uh, for a minute that the game was ever in doubt, but, mm. but coaches these days are looking for very near perfection, yes, aren't they? they? Are. Yeah. And their Achilles heel is conceding goals. Day one, they've kind of done it again in a match, really, that, that they, they shouldn't have done. Would that be fair? No, I think it would be fair. I, I believe that the, the players, uh, you know, Liverpool players, when they play a game like this, uh, they're... Uh, defensive attention won't be 100%. Mm, they will be more focused on scoring goals. It's normal because they know that they have uh, uh, you know, the ability to win the, this type of game. So I'm sure that when they play more competitive uh, teams, their, their, their focus on the, on, the, on the defensive side of it is going to be much higher than this. Tino, you know, that's a terrific goal. That's Very a terrific good. goal. The pass, the movement, everything about it, the finish, was, was, for me, was Premier League quality. That's how good a goal that was. And that's against a team, we talk about Liverpool defensively, OK, they were the best defence in the league last year. 22 goals they conceded. No one had a better defence than Liverpool's. So, to be able to carve, not carve them over, that's the wrong thing, what am I saying? But to be able to create chances, would a, would a Daniel Fark would go home tonight thinking, positive, what was positive? We, we, we against one of the best teams in world football, and on their own ground, have created 
six or seven really decent chances tonight. That's a positive. What I love about I hope, that also. I hope, if you, if you, I hope he's going to have also another analysis because, yes. you know, it's, it's what we talked before, yeah. you know. Uh, you, and I'm 100% sure they're going to create chances in the Premier League as well. The point is going to be for me cre converting those chances yes. and at the same time not giving away too many chances yeah. because